All right, thank you. So, um, Bridgefy is a mobile messaging app um, that works without the internet. It does so by relaying the messages over a mesh network that it forms with the peers. Um, it's uh, been downloaded uh, roughly 8 million dime times now um, on Google Play. Um, and it's uh, seen an uprise in interest in especially uh, areas with uh, social unrest uh, or war. Um, this includes the BLM protests, um, uh, Colombia, Iran, Hong Kong, etc. Um, so two years ago, uh, researchers found severe vulnerabilities in, in this mobile messenger, and um, we found that, uh, and, and in response to that, BridgeFi tried to um, improve, and they employed Signal, the Signal protocol for the network. Um, but they didn't do any assessment whatsoever and continued to claim that their app is secure, uh, thus putting potential uh, users at risk. Um, and in this work, we found that uh, their claims are not true. Uh, we were able to break the private chats uh, that are supported by the Signal protocol. Uh, disclaimer, this does not break the Signal protocol. <laughs> um, so the app is not open source. We had to reverse engineer it. Um, and when we opened the app for the first time on our phone, uh, we will be assigned a 128-bit random um, uh, integer that's um, our ID in the network. Um, and from now on, we will call the text that the sender S sends to receive our, uh, the payload content. So in this mesh network, uh, we can do broadcast uh, messages to all the users in the network. Uh, we can also do one-to-one um, uh, -one packets to direct people around us, or multi-hop uh, packets over the mesh network to uh, a specific receiver. Um, messages or packets are compressed first using GSIP and then encrypted with uh, Signal or ASCCP. Um, signal is only used for the payloads when the receiver is a single user. Otherwise, we use ASECP and use a shared network key uh, for the encryption. Um, for the bridge by messenger, by the way, uh, we know this key because it's shipped with the app. For the signal encryption, um, the handshake is uh, quite uh, trivial. So first, the users exchange their user IDs, and then their they uh, exchange their pre-key bundles. Um, obviously, uh, this is susceptible to an attack in the middle. Um, we found an interesting attack, though, on, on the private chats, uh, which consists of three steps. And it's basically a timing issue. Um, so first, we say that Alice and Bob, um, they meet, and they perform the handshake that we've just seen. Um, they can communicate, and, and then Bob leaves the scene. Uh, so he's no longer in direct range of Alice. Then Mallory comes along. Um, they also perform a normal handshake, so up until this point, nothing is suspicious. Um, but uh, now Alice wants to send Bob a message, and um, Mallory is around, so um, he, they already established a Bluetooth connection with Alice, and they will try to remain uh, Mallory for the encryption layer, so to speak, um, but become Bob on the Bluetooth layer. Um, and so how the attack works is that Mallory performs a partial handshake, which uh, BridgeFi makes possible, um, and sends it their user ID again. And now Alice um, will think that the session they have with uh, Mallory is actually a session with Bob. So when they send a message, the uh, message is queued into this Bluetooth session. And right before the message is um, submitted to the transmitter, um, the encryption is performed. Um, but if, if Mallory now sends again their um, use ID as a, so to speak, second partial handshake, they switch the ID of the session again. Um, and hence, the encryption will be performed with Mallory's public key. And now Mallory receives um, the, the message that was intended for Bob, and it's also encrypted with their public key, so they can read it. Uh, and we'll see a demo if time allows later on. Uh, the second attack we found is uh, broadcast um, message recovery. And here we assume that the key is unknown. The, um, 
BridgeFi has an architecture where they, they base the actual uh, mesh network on an SDK, uh, an, a commercial one. Um, so anyone can basically implement their own mesh network with it. And uh, let's say a group of users has their own BridgeFi app um, where we don't know the shared key. And because we know that compression precedes encryption, um, and we think about the two payload contents, password and uh, a lot of ones, uh, we can already uh, sort of guess that uh, um, ciphertext with the ones will be a lot shorter uh, because of the compression. So, and uh, with this, we can, we can build something like a compression oracle attack. Um, so let's say we have a set of possible payload contents. Um, uh, that, that means in, in this chat room, we assume the users send specific messages. And when listening in, when the attack is listening in on the network, all the broadcast messages will um, be pi, which is an element of this set. And um, then we, we, we did this with two uh, choices for, for the payload content set. So we have one is just individual bytes, and the other one is same length passwords from, from the ROCQ list. Then we do a two-step attack. So the first one is an offline simulation where we just simulate the network um, and try to derive the probability of observing specific lengths at specific hops in the network uh, with uh, certain payload contents. Um, here, hop is, um, let's say, when, when the message is relayed throughout the network, um, it surpasses different peers, and we call each peer here a hop. Um, and then the second, second part is uh, where we go online and try to sniff the um, sniff in the network. And we record the lengths that we observe at the different hops. Um, and then based on the observed lengths and the probabilities, we perform a maximum likelihood estimation to derive a guess pi hat. And uh, if this guess is then the actual payload in, in, in the packets, then our attack was successful. And he, uh, first we tried to see how we compare against random guessing and oops, we clearly see that we outperform it. Um, what we see here is uh, um, uh, the frequency of ranks below a certain number and rank here means that um, uh, it's, it's, it's sort of the index of the actual payload in the messages within our set of candidates that we derived with uh, maximum likelihood estimation. Um, and maximum likelihood estimation gives us uh, a set of candidates, um, the first one being the most likely. Um, and we also see, uh, we, we did some, some tests, and we saw that when increasing the number of messages that we um, observe in network and also the depth in which we track packets uh, in the network, um, we come very close to um, an ideal attack where we um, are very likely to guess the real payloads um, each time. BridgeFi responded on their blog saying uh, very positively, saying that they're, they were happy that their app was encrypted. And uh, uh, they also hint that no technical product is 100% safe. Um, yeah, but no, seriously, our conclusion here um, is that BridgeFi is, um, still has privacy issues. They, they still do not have a track record that speaks for uh, the needs of their audience, uh, which are likely high-risk users. Um, we also found that um, securing applications cryptographically is, is still non-trivial. Um, and we don't see a good alternative to BridgeFi. Uh, we know there is Briar, but um, we don't see it having the same popularity um, in these uh, situations and regions as, as BridgeFi. Um, all right, then let me maybe show you a demo of the first tech. Um, here we see Alice and Bob on the left and right. Uh, we, we, we then see how the attacker sniffs into the network and Alice and Bob just normally exchanging messages. Um, that way the attacker can find out the user ID of both um, entities in the network. Um, we then uh, send a private message from Alice to Bob and Bob receives it. So at this point, the handshake between those both um, peers was already performed. And then we say that Bob goes offline.
So now the attacker finds out their ID uh, and they launch a talk to attack on, um, on Alice, which allows them to intercept messages that are then intended for Bob. So if Alice now sends messages to Bob, uh, they actually are received on uh, Mallory's end. And this is a timing attack, so uh, it's not working for all messages. All right. Uh, then thank you for listening, and uh, I'm happy to take your questions.